This is a tutorial on geometric series. Before we can discuss geometric series, we have to know what a geometric sequence is. A geometric sequence is a sequence of numbers or numbers in order that have a pattern between each term in the sequence. If it's a geometric sequence, then each term is multiplied by the same number to get the next term in the sequence. So looking at our example sequence here, 1, 3, 9, 27, and 81, my first term is 1, and to get my second term, I would take my first term, 1, and multiply it by 3. Now if I wanted to find my third term, I would take my second term, 3, and I would multiply that one by 3, and I would get my third term, 9. To go from 9 to 27, I would take 9, and I would multiply that one by 3. And to go from 27 to 81, again, I would multiply my fourth term, 27, by 3 to get my fifth term, 81. If these multiples between each term is the same, in this case 3, then this is a geometric sequence. Now if you take all these same terms and you add them together, then you take your geometric sequence and you make it a geometric series. A geometric series is just a geometric sequence where all the terms are added together. Now there are two different types of geometric series. There are finite and infinite geometric series. First let's look at sequences. If we have a finite sequence, like the one in this example, 1, 3, 9, 27, and 81, notice that 81 is the last term in our sequence. So the sequence ends at 81. If we have an infinite sequence, like this example 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, notice that there are these three periods after our last term. That means that this sequence goes on forever. The pattern between 1 and 2, we would multiply by 2. Between 2 and 4, we would multiply by 2. Between 4 and 8, we would multiply by 2. Between 8 and 16, we would multiply by 2. And then these three periods here means that there's another term after 16, and that would be 32. Then there's another term after 32, that would be 64, and so on until we hit infinity. Now if we have a finite series, then we're taking a finite sequence and we're adding all the terms together. If we have an infinite series, then we have an infinite sequence and we're adding all of those terms together, but we'd always be adding another term forever. So we have 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16, and notice there's these three periods at the end here. That means we're adding 32, and then we're going to add 64. And we're going to continually add numbers until we're adding infinity. So the difference between a finite and an infinite series is that a finite series has a final term that's being added. An infinite series always has another term forever continually added to the end of this series. Now if we have a finite geometric series, that means that there's a final term at the end of our series, and we can find the sum or evaluate this series for its sum by adding all the terms together. So if I have 1 plus 3 plus 9 plus 27 plus 81, I can take 1 and 3 and add them together and get 4, then add 9 and get 13, then add 27 and get 40, and then add 81 and get 121. But imagine if this series had a lot more terms. Say this series had 35 terms on it. Then you probably wouldn't want to add each term individually. Instead, you can use this formula right here to find the sum of a finite geometric series. This formula means S of n is just your sum, where n is the number of terms in your series. In this example here, there's five terms, 1, 3, 9, 27, and 81. A1 is the first term in your series. In this example, that would be 1. n, again, is the number of terms in your series, and R is your common ratio. Your common ratio 
is the number that each term is being multiplied by. So if we took this series, 1, 3, 9, 27, 81, and brought it back into a sequence of 1, 3, 9, 27, and 81, well, to go from 1 to 3, we would take 1 and we would multiply it by 3. To go from 3 to 9, we would multiply it by 3. From 9 to 27, we would multiply by 3. And from 27 to 81, we would multiply by 3. This 3 that we're multiplying by each time to find the next term is r. This is our common ratio. And that's what would get plugged in to this formula here in both locations for r. So if we wanted to use this formula to find the sum of this example series here, well then our sum, and you can put the n at the bottom here, there's five, so the sum of these five terms is equal to the value of our first term, a1, which is just one, times one minus r, which is three, our common ratio, to the n power, so the fifth power, because there's five terms, and then this is all over one minus our common ratio of three. Now to further simplify this, three to the fifth power is 243. Now we're multiplying by one out here in front, and anything you multiply by one is just itself, so this will simplify into one minus 243 divided by now one minus three would be negative two. One minus 243 would be a negative 242 over negative two. So the sum of these five terms is 121, which is exactly what we got before. So that's how you can use this formula to find the sum of a finite geometric series. Now sometimes you'll see a geometric series written in summation notation. Summation notation is indicated by this crazy E here. This is the summation sign. Above the summation sign is what's called the upper limit. This typically, when we're talking about geometric series, is the number of terms that we're going to be adding together or sometimes you can think of this as the maximum value of n. The lower limit, or the number that appears underneath our summation, usually when you talk about geometric series, this is one, or you'll see it is listed as n is equal to one. This is the beginning value of our summation. Now next to the summation sign, you'll see the explicit formula for this geometric sequence that makes up our geometric series. So if we went back to our example series of 1, 3, 9, 27, and 81, we would have to write the explicit formula for the sequence of numbers that are 1, 3, 9, 27, and 81. Now the jump between each of these terms is 3. So our common ratio, r, is 3. Now the standard explicit form of our formula for a geometric sequence is that every term in our sequence, or the nth term in our sequence, is equal to the first term in our sequence, so a1, times our common ratio, r, to the n minus 1 power. Now in this sequence, our first term is one. Our common ratio is three. So for this sequence, our explicit formula would be one times three to the n minus one. Now, we don't plug in anything for n because as we move along to different terms in our sequence, the only thing that's changing in this formula is our value of n. If I simplify this, my explicit formula is an is equal to 
Now, 1 times anything is just itself, so 3 to the n minus 1 power. This explicit formula is what goes here at the end of our summation. So the summation of this example series would look like the summation, my upper limit is the maximum value of n, which in this case there's five terms, so this would be five. We're going to start with the first term when n is equal to one. And then at the end here, we have our formula three, to the n minus one power. So this would be the geometric series 1392781 written in summation notation. So here we're given a geometric series written in summation notation. So how do we evaluate this? Well, if we have the summation of five times two to the n minus one, when n is one to five, then we would just plug in all the integer values for n between one and five. So this is equal to five times two to the one minus one power plus five times two to the two minus one power, because I move from one to two in my value of n, plus five times two to the three minus one power, plus five times two to the four minus one power, plus five times two to the five minus one power. And I stop there because five is my maximum value of n, or my upper limit. Now, five times two to the one minus one power. Well, one minus one is zero. Two to the zero power is just one. And five times one is just five. So we add that to two to the two minus one power. Two minus one is one, two to the first power is just two, and two times five is 10. We're gonna add that to our third term, which is five times two to the three minus one power. Three minus one is two, so two to the second power is two squared, which is four. Four times five is 20. And we're gonna add that to our fourth term, five times two to the four minus one power. Four minus one is three, two to the third power is eight. Eight times five is 40. And we're gonna add that to our fifth term, five times two to the five minus one power. Five minus one is four, two to the fourth power would be 16. 16 times five is 80. So those are all five of my terms. Five plus 10 is 15, plus 20 is 35, plus 40 is 75. 75 plus 80 is 155. And that would be your solution. So that's how you evaluate a finite geometric series that's written in summation notation. Now we've talked about trying to find the summation or evaluating finite geometric series. So now let's talk about trying to find the summation or evaluating infinite geometric series. And when we try to find a value for an infinite geometric series, we talk about convergence and divergence. Now to find out whether or not we can find a sum or a value for an infinite geometric series, that all depends on whether it converges or diverges. And if it converges to an answer or it approaches a single number, then we say it's converging. If it does not approach a single number, then we say it's diverging. To determine whether it converges or diverges, the key is to look at your common ratio, R. 
If your common ratio r is less than 1, then your geometric infinite series does have an answer. If the absolute value of your common ratio is greater than 1, then your infinite geometric series does not have an answer. Now let's look at why this is. If our r value, or the absolute value of r value, is less than 1, some fraction, then we should be able to get an answer from our infinite geometric series. So here we're told that r is equal to 1 half, and our first term in our sequence is 1. Now remember, this goes on for infinity, so we start with 1, but our next term is just 1 times our common ratio, so our next term would be 1 half. Next term after that would be our second term multiplied by our common ratio, so that would be 1 fourth. After that, we would be adding 1 eighth. After that, we would add 1 sixteenth. After that, we would add 1 thirty second. And again, 1 sixty fourth. After that, 1 twenty eighth. And so on and so forth. But notice what's going on here. We're continually adding a smaller number again and again. Each number that we add on is smaller than the one before it. So each additional number that we're adding makes a smaller impact on the total sum of all these numbers. If I add 1 to 1 half, I get 1.5. Add 1 fourth, and I'm at 1 and 3 fourths, or 1.75. Add an eighth and I'll be at 1.875, or 1 and 7 eighths. Add a sixteenth, and I'll be at 1 and 15 sixteenths. Add a thirty-second, and I'll be at 1 and 31 thirty seconds. Add a sixty-fourth, and I'll be at 1 and 63 sixty-fourths. If I add 1 28th, I'll be at 1 and 1 27 over 1 28th. Now I'm continually adding a smaller and smaller fraction, and I'm getting closer and closer to the value of 2. Now I'll never actually hit 2, but we can say as we continue to add smaller and smaller fractions, we're getting closer and closer and closer to 2. So we would say that this infinite series converges on the number 2. Now let's look what happens when our r value is greater than 1. This is when our infinite series diverges. Here I have an r value of 2 and my initial term is 1. Well if my r value is 2 and my first term is 1 then my second term would be 2. My third term would be 4. My fourth term would be 8. The term after that would be 16, and then 32, and then 64, and I'm adding all these numbers together. So each time, I'm adding a larger number. So this is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's going to go to infinity as I continually add more terms. So that is why if your r value, or the absolute value of your r value, is greater than 1, then there is no answer to your infinite geometric series. If the absolute value of your r is less than 1, then your series will converge at an answer. Now say we know that our infinite series does have an absolute value of r is less than 1, which means this is going to converge at an answer. If we wanted to find that sum, then we could use this formula the sum is equal to our first term divided by 1 minus our common ratio. So that's an easy formula. Let's try using it. Here we're given two infinite series. We can tell that they're infinite series because our upper bound here is infinity, which means our n value will always increase forever. To the right of our summation sign here, we have our sequence formula in standard form, and remember that looks like a n is equal to a 1 times r to the n minus 1. 
In our first example here, our r value is one fifth. This absolute value is definitely less than one. So we can find the value that this series converges at. We just use our formula S or SN is equal to our first term A1 over one minus R. Our first term, that's when N is equal to one. If I plugged in one here, I'd have one minus one in the exponent, one minus one is zero. So I have one fifth to the zero power and anything to the zero power is just one. So this whole term here is equal to one and one times two is two. So my first term here is two. Take two and divide it by one minus our common ratio, which is one fifth. And this becomes two over four fifths or 10 fourths. So this infinite series will converge to the sum of 10 fourths, or you can think of that as five halves. Now let's look at our next example. Here we have three times three halves to the n minus one. This means that our r value here is three halves. Well, three halves, or the absolute value of three halves, that's greater than one. So this infinite series does not converge. This is divergent. So we would say that this infinite series diverges. Or you could say that it has no solution. So now that we've covered convergence and divergence, that completes the tutorial on geometric series.